Superscom.com and the Scarlet's Rally. We are here with a bunch of misfits. Uh, we got let's go from the back. We got Josh over there taking care of base duties for Nick. We got Leonard over here. We got Steve. Thank you guys for giving us a little bit of your time. I think it was uh, buggy with a few questions. You're gonna hear some really cool sound effects throughout the the interview. Not to ruin it, but you know I'm sure they're gonna be very original. We got a titties one going on uh, before the interview. You're gonna have some of that, right, Steve? No. Is no? No, 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 no. Now you're not gonna do it. Okay, so <laughs> we got that one instead of titties. Excuse me. <laughs> Talk about. Well, here we are. This local show um, with Havoc. And uh, you guys are playing on Speedwolf and Silencer as well. So basically, uh, is this kind of like a warm-up show for the upcoming May-June European tour that you guys have in the works uh, for, well, actually announced with Havoc and Suffocation? Um, you kind of, if you want to look at it that way, it just coincidentally happened. But no, uh, we, we were doing this first. So this was just a warm-up show. To, we knew it was going to snow today, so it's a warm-up for today with the blizzard a march fucking blizzard event. and uh there's steve there's another reason tell him why it snowed today because you did something <laughs> didn't you fix your, your amp or your car or something uh i got the um sh blinker fluid replaced in my car today so because i knew the weather was going to be bad it snowed no we're just yes. playing because we love denver man we don't get to do it very often so and then suffocation came along afterwards so which will be pretty sweet and going to Europe with Havoc will be pretty cool. Are there any other touring plans aside of the European tour that you have coming up? Anything in US, Latin America, uh, in Japan, Australia, coop. anything? Um, I think we're going to be going to play in New York City August 3rd with the band called Macabre. You know, it's Legend. some kind of sweet uh, horror show thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be, we're actually going to turn Christian on stage that night. And, Play like an just acoustic, for the one show an acoustic piece set just to you know tell everybody that the macabre set's going to be evil and you know they should repent their ways and stuff so, so by comparison you're gonna it's going to be the, sweet man the I mean, stage distortion free show carnage. i'm gonna tell everybody jesus was a mexican you know, and see if i can start a few fights we'll have diego diego jesus there was an architect at one point but he was a mexican first so Mexicans can be architects. What made you come up with that conclusion? Uh, the origin. I saw a picture in Atlanta of a, you know, dark skinned Jesus. That's well, because Diego and our Jesus stole Jesus, or it's <laughs> totally Diego. <laughs> the guy Diego from right the Scourge is Mexican Jesus. That's it. So if you don't believe me, take a picture of to violently take a look at a picture to oh. violently vomit or disgorge. He plays in that band. Uh, his name is, that's Diego, isn't it? Deej. Francisco. Deej, Deej, the, G, D, Jesus. I get it. Got it. Deej. You guys left off 2010 with the release of Misled by Certainty. Um, Damn, 2010 really? Yes. Three years ago this August. Uh, what is the current situation basically with the new <coughs> material and any future release? Anything you know in the works, projected release date? Writing, recording, nothing. Just, yeah, just yeah. in the writing process right now. Just moving at our own pace. Talk to Steve. We ain't, we ain't trying to rush it, you know? Okay. I've actually got eight songs written for our new album. I already have a uh, title, and uh, I'm not going to tell you guys, though, but <laughs> the title's going to be. It's pretty sick. I mean, I got a song written, and I'm not even in the band. Yeah, I've got two of them written, but they're for, it's for a different band. One of them is called Jump in the Fire. That's one of the songs. Sweet. I we can't wait to record it. I thought it was Jump in the Choir. It was an acapella band. That's right. I forgot. I did decide to change that. Sorry about that. Jump uh, in the Choir. I thought it was called Changing My Tire. Now, even though you guys are recording, uh, sorry, you're writing in the writing process right now, is it planned to be released through Relapse Records again? Then the upcoming album? Yes, sir, it is. Okay, good. Still a relapse band. It's going to be called Seven. <laughs> our seventh yeah, album. Seven studio show. album. It's going to be that? sweet. So far, since you've you know written some stuff, as far as influences, lyrics, sound, music elements, what, the, what is... The way Tafalic songs work is that we think about it for about three years, and then we <laughs> just, like, all of a sudden just write. It's magically written. We go to practice, and, like, we just know the song. And then the next day we're playing it in Europe, so it's pretty weird. Uh, everybody's got ideas that they're just 
everybody's just doing their thing and then we get together and hash out an album in three months he said hash hash <laughs> are you playing any new songs in the european tour mm, unless we improv it and play it that night well, there's that one off misled that's a new album yeah to us that's still a new album but uh we're still touring for it man we're trying to pull a metallica and just milk it yeah. <laughs> Last year, you released a promo video for the 2010 release, uh, the title track, Or Worm. Sorry for the pronunciation. Oh, that's right. So basically, what happened with this video being released two years after the album came out? I mean, is there anything particular that's just a way to just give something to the fans? What was it? Uh, I don't know. I just think some dudes are really artistic and, you know, they won't compromise a vision until it's right you know so i think the producer just took his complete time and made sure it was perfect so that's it and gave him complete artistic control you know let him yeah. do what he wants and and it, it is it's a very it's a very you know you say pretty much the word that i use here is um what a very graphic video well they couldn't find the right worm so it took them about <laughs> a year and a half to find the right worm and then once they got it they I mean, everything they, came together it's even age restricted in youtube and everything but it's still on youtube isn't that crazy? yeah it is it I is like actually better when it was a pirate video called yar worm gnar <laughs> <laughs> worm Nar. but what was the basic concept behind the video i mean even though uh, you it's when you producer. get that stupid song stuck in your head like some dude's humming a song and then mm -hmm. you can't get that out of your head until you finally you know you're just like grab a drill bit and just drill it out whoa I don't think the video had anything to do with the actual song lyrics and stuff. No. It's just kind of an artistic what about that, video. What about that lyric that says, guts dropping out and girls get really nice boobs? Really nice boobs. <laughs> or I just, that's that's I my favorite part of the I song. Actually read the so it was more for the shock value of it? Or did you guys yeah, have we, control we, over no, it? I mean, we, no, we didn't no, even know what we were going to expect. Yeah, didn't know what we were going to expect. Okay. Uh, I guess the... Uh, the Brax is a filth video was way better, but it was censored too. So we just, uh, you know, it never made a solid light of day, I guess. But it was a lot of acting. You know, we had to go to Mount Evans and climb and do a bunch of weird shit. It was cool. And for this specific video, was it actually made here? Was it yeah, made but in Sweden? We don't, maybe the guy's using his creative talent to take forever too. But someday you'll see uh, Brax is a filth for misled by someday we paid for it already i hope you could see it someday me too man it was great i had to take well, acting classes for that going back to in a specific specific aspect of the band basically where do you find at least in the the american metal scene that you have your niche of fans uh, outside of colorado inside of colorado uh, where do you guys think you're most wherever we're popular? not playing i would say <laughs> Wherever we're not playing is where our fans are, because wherever we play, they're not. And uh, and then you see, they're like, how come you're not playing in this city and next time? Yeah, we heard you guys were playing here. Next time, we're just going to announce a bunch of fake dates for a tour and then wait till see what people write in about that and be like, ways out, we're going to go to your city instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Anywhere, anywhere you hear of <laughs> ways <laughs> out. That would be very interesting. <laughs> We're not, and, and we're not going to play that song too. Just so you know, we're going to make, we're going to announce that. So don't come expecting to hear that song. I thought you were, I thought we're gonna gonna play it. No, we're going to play this song, not that song. That's but uh, this I, I would say, I, I'd say for us, we have a really good niche in uh, like Chicago, New York, um, Los Angeles can be pretty cool sometimes. San Francisco, yeah, all the big cities are usually pretty uh, sweet. Seattle's brutal. Portland, they call it Pornland. You know, just in case. My buddy Charles for, the <laughs> for the insiders. Pornland. For the insiders. And uh, I'd say Beaumont, Texas is pretty sick too. Beaumont. Brutal. Brutal land. Don't forget Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Okay. There you go. Texas. We interviewed Speedwolf not too long ago, I see like half an hour ago. <laughs> and you, Steve, sorry, single you guys are. Uh, you, Steve, actually worked with them on their latest album, producing it. So you you have any other producing jobs that you're currently involved with? Any other collaborations? Uh, else? I've recorded a few local bands around town, and right now I'm doing Scalafreya, another local band from here. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what I'm working on now. Okay. And when he's not recording bands, he works in the produce section of uh, King Supers, so he's. 
doing a lot of producing. There you go. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, uh, we had a question for Brian, but you got to uh, take on that one, Josh. Yeah. You got to take on that one. Uh, the call, I refer to him as Legolas because uh, when he grew up, he was Legolas. His parents were against toys. Yeah, I'm going to ask the fake Brian. Um, Real in metal years, you know, yep. kind of like dog years, you're technically the new guy. Even though you joined the band in 2009, three years ago. So, besides, you know, the regular adaptation of the band question, has joining the band fulfilled your expectations? Not theirs. It's actually quite dash them. I was uh, a fan of the band before for many years and had a different... I had a, I had a different idea of what it would have been like to mm. be in the band. And from the first day... Actually, the first day was really nice because they had me sign a contract that I couldn't read the words to. Uh, so I thought that was intriguing. Um, little did I know, you know? I mean... I mean, no like part of you know royalties, running coffee. Uh, I have to actually, I have to, I have to mill the beans myself and then brew the coffee, and then deliver one cup to each person's house. Cadence. And yeah, brutal, was, I did, brutal. Three years. I did not expect that. Brutal demands. I did and not expect that. that. Um, and he gets a to Europe. I don't mind that. I mean, that's all right. That's awesome. Thank you. That's. Well, thank you. <laughs> I love coffee. Coffee rings, did you say? So, no, but, so now the Nick question, because you're doing Brian and oh, Nick, right? Let me get so, the, let me yeah, get the Nick going. Uh, three way, dude. You're doing No, get, no insult to the Nick actual members out. that are not here with us. No, Nick's uh, there. What's yeah, up, bro? <laughs> Nick Chinchell's here for you. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, playing with uh, Job for a Cowboy, right? Oh. Mm -hmm. Excited about the Mayhem Fest? Yeah. Dates? Yeah, we went, you know. We uh, we got on the we got on the tour and uh, we're going to be playing it so that's going to be exciting. Um, you know I've got uh, I've got a whole bunch of new picks that I won't be using. I am sponsored by uh, Dunlop, um, so I mean that's it's, these are the things that we're looking forward to and there's some new T-shirts available. Absolutely. <laughs> then just to end this, just real quick, put you on the spot. Any last words to your fans? Any cussing somebody out any final thoughts anything you want to say out there go ahead look at the camera i'm broke if you could send me money personally i'd gratefully appreciate it thank you we're looking for that one fan that can that has enough money to buy 100,000 copies of our album <laughs> and uh, we'd really love you man uh, and we'll give you a free pipe and a shirt but if uh, you can buy 100,000 copies of our new album we'd love you to all our other fans. We'll buy you a beer. Party it up. Cool. Well, right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> that was a fitting. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it, man. Leonard, appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, Steve. And uh, really appreciate you giving us a little time to bug you. And best of luck, man, with the upcoming tour. And you want to do a last sound effect to end this? Not a riri. Not riri? Okay. Uh, okay, no, hold on. We got one. We got one coming up. Um. A good one. Can you dig it?